Mom, my math teacher gave me a 110. All right, so that was Wynn, uh, one of my advisees, who said that. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> All right, um, so if you've ever earned over 100% on a math test, then you may have felt like this dude over here, okay? Um, one thing to point out is that percentages are out of 100, whereas decimals are out of 1, okay? Now, they are directly related to one another, um, which brings me to our topic. Um, we're talking about converting between decimals, percents, and fractions, and then working with percentages as well, and that covers sections 7.4 and 7.5 in your textbook, okay? So converting between decimals and percents. When you convert from a decimal to a percent, you're really just multiplying by 100 each time. And the shortcut is to move the decimal two places to the right. So we have these three examples. And all you do is move the decimal two places to the right. So 0 0.121 is the same as 12.1%. Um, 7 tenths is the same as, you got to fill in a zero here, 70%. And 1 and 9 tenths is the same as 190%. So that's not too bad. Okay, so now let's move on to converting a percent to a decimal. It's just the same thing except in reverse. So when you convert a percent to a decimal, you divide by 100 or move the decimal two places to the left. So 105% is the same as... 1.05. 3% is the same as, notice we have to fill in a zero here, 3 hundredths. And 0.4% or 4 tenths percent is the same as 0 0.004. Okay. Now, changing a fraction to a percent. When you change a fraction to a percent, it's important to first change the fraction to a decimal, which is just your numerator divided by your denominator. Note that you can use calculators, so don't try to do this all by hand. Um, and then you move the decimal two places from left to the right, so it's just converting a decimal to a percent after that. So let's do one example. Here's the example of 7 twelfths. Okay, so we're going to first convert it, uh, this decimal, or this percent to a de ugh, this fraction to a decimal. So let's pull up your calculator. You take 7 and you divide it by 12. Looks like we have a repeating decimal, so I'm going to round this to 0.5833. We know that that 3 goes on and on to infinity, but that's really not that important for us. Okay, so now we're going to convert this decimal to a percent, and we do that by moving this decimal place over twice to the right. So this is the same as 58.3%. Now, you could have just rounded it. You could have rounded it to a different place. I don't really care in this, in this case, um, as long as it's close. Okay, so the next. Now we're moving on to 7-5. In 7-5, it talks about finding the percent of a number. Now, in your head, when I said the word of... You're probably thinking of multiplication, or I hope that you would by now, okay? So when you find the percent of a number, you're going to be multiplying. You're going to be tempted to divide. Don't do it, okay? You're going to be multiplying. Okay, so let's move on to this. The percent of a number, here's just an example. Finding the percent of a number is the same as taking that percent. See, we got 24% of 112. The first thing you do is to convert that percent to a decimal. Notice they move the decimal place two places to the left. Um, changing the of to a multiplying sign, and then multiplying those two numbers together. So if you take, this is all on your calculator too, which is wonderful, 24 hundredths, and multiplying it by 112, you're going to get a number that's smaller than 112. And the reason that that is because you're finding a fraction of a number, a number, you're multiplying by a number that's smaller than 1. Okay, so it's going to be smaller than that, than your whole of 112. Okay? Let's do an example. As you know, I'm the 8th grade basketball coach, so I'm going to use this example because Patterson Williams is an excellent shooter. Okay, um, Patterson made 30% of her three-point shots in the championship game. If she shot 10 three-pointers, how many did she make? Okay, so we're finding 30% of her three-point shots. Okay, of meaning multiply. So we're going to be multiplying with 30% of... The total number of three-point shots that she made, or that she, that she shot. She shot 10 three-pointers, okay? So 30% of 10 is what we're trying to find. 
So now let's convert this percent to a decimal by moving it over, the decimal place over twice to the left, which is just 0.3 of is the same as multiplying 10. Now, you could probably figure out what this one is in your head, but I'm still going to do it in your, my calculators just so that you can see. 0.3 times 10 is the same as 3, which means that she made three three-point shots. Which means she made how many points? Nine. Go, Patterson. Okay. Next, proportional reasoning. Okay, you need to write this down. Make sure you do. Pause the video to write it down. Write down the is over of is equal to percent over 100. Now, we've been working with proportions, and your project is also about proportions. So this should be familiar. Okay, so make sure to write this down. Is of percent 100. All right, here's an example. We've got 20% of 55 is what number? Okay, you could solve it by changing this 20% to a decimal and then multiplying it by 55. That is an excellent way to do this problem. Or you can use the is of percent 100. Okay, so we've got is of percent 100. So is, we don't know what is is. So I'm going to write an x here. Out of 55. So our of is going to be 55. Now our percent is 20. And it's always out of 100. So if you noticed, is is what we don't know. It's why there's an x there. Of 55, we know of, it has to be out of 55. And then 20% goes to the percentage, and then it goes, it's always out of 100. So now we use proportional reasoning. The cross products property. Let's see. So we multiply 20 by 55. And set it equal to 100x. Oh no. Didn't mean to erase that. Set it equal to 100x. And I'm going to multiply 20 by 55 in my calculator. So I get 1100. equal to 100x multiplied by the reciprocal, which means we're left with 11 is equal to x. Okay. Here's another example. What percent of 2,000 is 204? You may want to try this on your own first, so pause the video. Okay, so what percent? We don't know what the percent is. So x is going to be what the percent is. It's always out of 100%. Now it says of 2,000. Of is going to be down here. And is 204. 204 goes in the numerator. So we multiply these together. Is equal to 2,000x. Okay. So x has to equal, I'm going to multiply my calculator, so divided by 2,000, and I get 10.2. So x has to be equal to 10.2. Now it is a percent, so it has to be percent. Okay. All right, we're going to do a couple examples of how to, how to use percentages. Um, things that you'll think about in real life, tip, discounts, um, markup, etc. Okay, or sales tax. Okay, so let's talk about a discount example. Sports Schmashwarty is having an amazing sale on all of their winter gear. 65% off of the regular price, which is great because Sports Schmashwarty never goes on sale, FYI. Um, you find this, um, the snowboarding jacket that you've been wanting for the past year. It was $220 before the sale. How much is it now? Okay, so there are a couple ways you can go about this problem. Um, we know that it's 65% off. Now, what that means is that you aren't paying 100%. You're paying 100% minus 65%, which we know is 
um, let's see, what, 35 percent? 35 percent. So you could use this 35 percent and take the shortcut. I'm going to show you the shortcut method first, okay? So you're really finding you're only going to pay 35 percent of the original price. So of the original price of $220. Now this is the fast way. This is the way that you should do this in your calculator when you go to stores, okay? You just subtract that discount and you figure out what percentage you're actually paying. Okay, so now we're going to convert this to a decimal and multiply. So 35% of 220. We're going to multiply 0 0.35 times 220 is equal to 77. So that means you pay $77 for this jacket, which is pretty awesome because that's a sweet, sweet deal. Okay, you probably felt really excited after you bought the jacket because it was on sale. Okay, that's $77. $77. Okay, now let's talk about sales tax, okay? Um, sales tax in the state of California is 9.25% which is a lot bigger than Georgia, okay? After shopping at Sh um, Schmargett in Laguna Beach, your purchase came to $62.75 before tax. How much do you end up paying, including tax? So tax is that additional amount that you pay to the government whenever you buy anything. So you notice here, California is 9.25%, which is a lot higher, again, than Georgia. So let's find what the sales tax would be of $62.75 by multiplying that 9.25% by $62.75. So let's multiply 9.25% by $62.75. Okay, convert this to a decimal. Notice we get to fill in a zero. Okay, so we've got 0 0.0925 by 62.75, and we end up with $5.80. So that means that you'll have, you'll have to pay $5.80 extra. That's what you pay on top of that $62.75. So what you do is you take that amount, and add it to $62.75. The way you can think about it is you really pay around $0.09 cents for every dollar um, extra. So in this case, we end up paying $68.55. Okay, we're going to do one more because that's really all that we have time for. I don't want this video to be too long. So let's talk about tips at a restaurant. As you guys know, I worked in a restaurant like all my life, okay? So uh, make sure to tip your, your waiter very well. I would say at least 15%, even if they're terrible, okay? Uh, make sure to at least tip them because that's, that's what they work on. Um, they don't get paid hardly at all. I think they get paid, I got paid $2.12 an hour. So make sure that you tip your, your waiter or waitress, okay? All right, so tips at a restaurant example. After a particularly nice lunch, your bill comes to $44.75. You and your two friends split the bill equally. How much do you each owe? Don't forget to add in the 20% tip. Okay, so let's figure out how much you each owe first by dividing. Let's take $44.75 and divide it by two. Okay, so we get $22.50. And looks about, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna round it yet. We've got $22 and let's see. Three, seven, five. That's how much you guys pay each. Now you're also gonna add in that 20% tip. So you're gonna have to find 20% of this number. You guys notice the trend, I'm sure, by now. Okay, convert to a decimal and multiply. That means you each have to pay this much additional cash. And then you have to add it in to what your original cost was. Notice I'm waiting around to the very end. So now we add in 
22.375, and that's how much you have to pay, $26.85. All right, that's all we have time for today. Um, thank you so much for watching. Make sure that you've, um, I'm going to be checking your notes tomorrow, so make sure that you've 